Although the Israeli troops and tanks have withdrawn from the Gaza Strip, the consequences of their ground invasion are still being felt in Gaza, as at least five people were killed and another six were critically injured after an unexploded Israeli missile blow-up in Beit Lahia in the northern Gaza Strip. Among the dead are a foreign reporter for the AB agency and a local Palestinian journalist. Eyewitnesses said the incident occurred as a police engineering team was attempting to defuse an Israeli missile that landed days earlier near a Sheikh Zayed Towers and did not explode. <laughs> on Wednesday, Israeli warships again opened fire on Palestinian fishermen off the coast of the southern Gaza Strip in the second such incident since the agreed-upon 72-hour truce came into effect. We Palestinian fishermen are simply suffering under war or under truce. We are not protected even though we do not go past the six miles limit. Our whole life depends on fishing. This is how we can provide food for our families, but under the situation we are paralyzed. The United States continued airstrikes this week against Islamic State fighters in northern Iraq. The humanitarian situation for tens of thousands of refugees who have fled Islamic State violence remains precarious. In a further sign of stepped-up U.S. military involvement, it was announced on Monday that the CIA is arming fighters in the Kurdish region of Iraq. Police in Ferguson, Missouri fired several rounds of tear gas to disperse protesters late on Wednesday on the fourth night of demonstrations over the fatal shooting of an unarmed black teenager by a police officer last weekend. Clouds of smoke lingered above an area hit with police tear gas as a crowd of some 350 protesters scattered off into side streets and into cars. Michael Brown, 18, was shot to death in the mostly black suburb of Ferguson, Missouri on Saturday. A witness told local media that Brown had raised his arms to police to show that he was unarmed before being killed. Mexico's President Enrique Peña Nieto signed into law today so-called secondary laws to Mexico's polemic energy reform, opening this public sector to private competition for the first time in 76 years. The energy reform opens the doors to private investment and to new technology. This allows for the increase of energy production in a transparent, efficient, competitive and sustainable way. Recent polls conducted by several of the country's leading daily newspapers show that 65 percent of the population disapprove of the legislation, while staunch critics call it an attack on national sovereignty. We should defend rather than privatize our petroleum since it is a 100 percent Mexican country. That is what I believe. Opposition left parties and civil organizations have shown wide dissent to one clause, which will legally permit land appropriations. It seeks to legalize their own legal framework to forcibly occupy the land, handing over farm worker lands through expropriation. Mexico's energy sector has until now provided one-third of the country's public spending. However, analysts say with private competition, the number will drop to one-tenth. Colombia's Chancellor Maria Angela Holguin appeared today to clarify the country's position on the closing of the border between Venezuela and Colombia. Holguin emphasized the fact that it was a unilateral decision on the part of Venezuela that Colombia had nothing to do with and it would only last for a month. As of Monday, Venezuela began closing the 2,000 kilometre border during nighttime hours in an attempt to stem the flow of contraband between the two countries. This comes just a few days after the two presidents, Juan Manuel Santos and Nicolas Maduro, sat down for talks on the issue of contraband. In light of the recent sanctions placed on the European Union, United States, Canada and Norway, Russia plans to expand imports of Latin American goods. Moscow will no longer be cooperating with those countries that impose sanctions against it due to the Ukraine conflict, which originally made up 8% of agricultural imports. In order to fill this gap, Russia will be importing more goods from Ecuador, Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay and Chile. Russia is a net consumer, or better said, there is no Russian production of coffee, cacao, tropical fruits, and they can be valuable exports to our country. 
already accounting for 70% of banana imports, Ecuador is looking to increase production of this and other commodities to meet the needs of the Russian market. Sanctioned goods that will now be imported from Latin America include dairy, meat, fruits, and vegetables. This decision comes after Russian President Vladimir Putin's six-day Latin American tour in July, where he signed various bilateral agreements with regional leaders. 100 years ago today, the Panama Canal opened, changing world trade forever. With its complex system of locks, the 77-kilometer-long canal was considered the greatest engineering project of its day and one of the wonders of the modern world. Following his maneuvers to have Panama separate from Colombia, U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt bought the rights to the canal zone in 1903 and began construction in the same year. Some 5,000 workers died during the canal's construction. The United States considered the canal a protectorate until 1999 when rights to the land were turned over to Panama. In 2012, some 300 million tons of goods were transported through the canal, representing 5% of global trade.